Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast, episode 11. <laughs> Got a lot of fun stuff going on today. We're going to start out with some follow-up to that walk review I put up the other day. I reviewed a Debouillet carbon steel walk. Got a lot of feedback about that. We're going to go through some of that feedback. We're also going to take a quick look at some walk tools, things you might need to complete your walk loadout. Also on the menu, we're going to opine a little on the safety of non-stick coatings versus carbon steel. We'll talk a little bit about whisks. We've got pan inventory updates, some clarity on warping issues, viewer mail, and as always, we've got carbon steel seasoning tips and more. Let's get started. Sina MD writes in and says, got a general question, they got a map for, started seasoning with grapeseed oil using the oven method, six rounds, not happy with the seasoning, can they continue a few more rounds? No, quit seasoning that pan and start cooking. Cook in that pan 15, 20 times, go buy a dozen eggs, cook those one after the other. Cook, 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 and then if you need to season or touch something up, go for it. Season less and cook more. Okay, now recently I put up a big in-depth review and cooking feature on this Debouillet carbon steel French-made wok. Now, I did not give that wok a thumbs up. One of the rare times I haven't given a Debouillet product a thumbs up. I think I've got seven pieces of Debouillet cookware. I've absolutely loved six of them. So I consider that a pretty good percentage anyway. Now, some of the feedback I got underneath that review is several people wrote in and said, well, why don't you try a non-stick wok? Well, I don't really want to try a non-stick wok because when you do wok cooking, it's up there like when you're searing a steak. You're using really, really high temperatures. And what we all know about non-stick surfaces is that if you get them too hot, they can start to off-gas, they can put out harmful chemicals. So what I did is got on the internet and went to what I consider the homepage of the World Wide Web, and that is goodhousekeeping.com. They had an article up there about non-stick cooking surfaces and their relative safety or not. I just wanted to comment on that for a moment. But what they did was do some testing and they reiterated that up around 500 degrees and higher, a non-stick cooking surface can start to get dangerous. And what they say is that a lightweight non-stick skillet can actually get up above 500 degrees in as little as a minute and 45 seconds if you're preheating it empty. So a minute and 45 seconds, that is very precise. I am not that precise. so. If I put a pan on the stoves to start heating up, start preheating, I need a little bit more margin of error. Got a three-year-old kid running around, he might need something. These days he might receive a text message. Oh, excuse me for a second. Eh. They say it's 660 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not what you're gonna cook at, but if you do get distracted, leave your pan on a burner, you could easily get up there. Pans may more significantly decompose. They use the word decompose, emitting fumes strong enough to cause polymer fume fever. And they follow up with, at 680 degrees Fahrenheit, Teflon releases at least six toxic gases, including two carcinogens. Since these toxic gases won't kill a human, but can kill a pet bird. Okay, without trying to be too scientific and get the temperatures down to the degree, let's just take a step back here and listen to some of the words they're using that are associated with cooking at too high a temperature in those non-stick skillets. They're talking about decomposition, polymer fever, headache and chills, toxic gases. Toxic gases in something you're cooking in. Why would you want to do it? I don't know. Carbon steel is not perfect. There's some headaches with the seasoning from time to time, some headaches with the cleanup, but I will gladly take all that rather than cook in a non-stick skillet. Josh writes in, says new to carbon steel. In one video, I say I'm using a coated whisk. In another video, I say that it's okay to use metal utensils in carbon steel. So which is, is a stainless steel whisk okay? Now, let's see, I got a couple of whisks here. Here's a coated, and here's a stainless steel. Coated whisk. Not so bad. The stainless steel whisk. About as pleasant as talking to my wife about money. So other than the horrible noise with the stainless steel whisk, 
I'd say that the stainless steel is not going to really do any damage to your carbon steel. Now when I'm cooking things like pork chops or a hamburger or an egg and I use a metal utensil, that might put one or two little bitty scratches on the pan. No big deal there. Just be aware though, if you use the stainless steel, really go crazy, you're going to put about nine zillion miniature scratches on your pan. Now it's not going to hurt the carbon steel. And some people think that all those little bitty scratches, the next time you do a maintenance seasoning, they think that it gives that seasoning something to kind of grip to. What do you guys think? That's going to be the next poll question. Do you use stainless steel whisks in your carbon steel? Who knows? We'll see. For me, I always enjoy getting new kitchen gear. I want one of every kitchen gadget and piece of equipment ever made. Drives my wife crazy, but I love kitchen stuff. So when I got the wok, I also wanted to get all the stuff I needed to go along with it. Now, none of these things are really big enough to lend themselves to their own video, but I thought I'd compile some of the things I bought and whether they worked well or not and run through those real quick here. First up is this Tablecraft wok spoon. Cost about $14. Now the spoon, the dipping part, it works just fine. What I don't like about this one is the bamboo wood handle. And there's nothing wrong with the handle itself, it's just the way that it's attached to the metal part. Here you can see that it's attached almost like a garden tool would be. And when I move this thing around, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but there is some play in the spoon, between the spoon and the handle. And it feels a little unsteady, so I don't really like this one. That's the Tablecraft Wok Spoon. Okay, the GX1 Wok Spatula. What I like about this one is the curvature here really matched the interior walls of the wok I was using. I like that. It's all one piece of metal, no separate wooden handle that you have to worry about the stability there. And even being one piece of metal without a separate handle, it did not overheat. And it was only about $12, so I like that. Spiders. This one's a Swiffy, and this one is a Helen Chin. Now they both work pretty well as far as scooping food out of a wok. I also use them on my deep fryers. They work pretty well there. But the note I want to make here is that the Swiffy is easier to clean up. If you look at the wires on the back, they're very smooth and almost kind of continuous all the way around. The Helen Chin, it works well, but the wires are kind of twisted. That's how they make the mesh there. The wires are twisted. So I've had this happen a couple of times. I'll use the wok spider, wash it with the blue sponge. A few days later, I'll be using it to dip out, say, some french fries from a deep fryer. I look down and there's something blue in my food. Ah, it's a piece of sponge. This thing really can grab a sponge, so it's a little bit more difficult to clean up. Jeff writes in, he says, I'm a vegan who doesn't cook with oil most of the time, and when I do, it's just a small amount. First thing to do there, get a pound of bacon, cook it up, chow down, knock that vegan problem out in no time flat. He goes on to say, once the pan is seasoned, is it necessary to use oil when actually cooking? Yes, it is. Now, all kidding aside, once your carbon steel is seasoned, yes, indeed, you're still going to need to use fat when you cook. It's never going to be like a chemical Teflon coated nonstick skillet. Always going to need to use some fat and you're going to need to cook things correctly at the right temperatures. If you do that, you can get pretty good nonstick performance. Not with everything, but with most things. Plenty of vegetable-based oils out there to use, but just note that you are going to have to use some sort of fat when you cook. Occasionally in these pan casts, I do what's called 30 seconds of knowledge. Connie wrote in and said, just thought I would let you know knowledge is spelled with a K. Oh, thanks Connie. Pan spotting, where are the pans? First is a tidbit of news from Maffer. I was on the Amazon site the other day, clicking on some Maffer pans, and the Maffer storefront was gone. I don't know where it went. Talked to them, they said they're doing some maintenance on it. It will return soon. So if you're looking for Maffers on Amazon, keep an eye out for that. Also a quick update from Debouye on those Mineral B Pro pans we talk about so much around here. They were sold out pretty much from January through the first week of March. They were back in stock for about two weeks. Now they're sold out again of that 12 and a half inch model. I think they still have some of the 11s the, uh, in the other two sizes. I can't remember, was it a 10 and a nine and a half or so? I can't remember. They got the other three though. But my advice there as always is if you want one of those Debouye Mineral B Pros and you see one, 
If you're on the fence, I would go ahead and get it before they go out of stock again. I'm not sure when they're going to be resupplied this time. I haven't checked with them this week. Quickly talking about carbon steel pan warping. Uh, Lynn writes in about a Maviel pan. She says she thought she followed the instructions correctly, but now her pan is warped. She let it cool on a stove burner. Did she overheat it? And she also has a flat top stove. And she says, you don't talk about overheating or warping. What? Okay. I think I've talked about warping in pretty much every carbon steel pan review I've done. I did that buyer's guide where I talked about warping issues on every different type of stove top. I also did a complete dedicated video to warping issues with carbon steel pans. So other than that and the other nine zillion times I've mentioned it, I never talk about warping. She's correct there. So being a smarty pants aside, I realize not everybody's seen every video I've ever done. So let's quickly run through warping issues with carbon steel skillets and various stove tops. We've touched on it before, but you can never reiterate this too much. Now, if you've got a gas stove top, the world is your oyster. You can choose pretty much any carbon steel pan you want. You can choose based on weight, based on looks, based on price, based on size, whatever, because they're probably going to work pretty well on a gas stove top. The flame heats the pan pretty evenly. The flame goes up and around the sides. You can season the pan on the stove top. The world is your oyster when it comes to carbon steel skillets and a gas stove. For flat top stoves, it is a different ball game. You might have trouble seasoning your pan on a flat top stove, and therefore you might want to season your pan in your oven, and therefore you might want a pan with a non-coated handle. For example, this master here has a strip steel handle with no coating on it. That can go in the oven. This Debouillet mineral bead omelet pan here has a coated handle with a little plasticky medallion in it. It looks nice and it feels nice, but this pan cannot be seasoned in the oven. It would damage the coating in that medallion. That's one thing. The next thing is the warping issues on your flat tops. It's very important that you keep your pan flat because your pan is going to heat only where it touches the cooktop. If you get some warping there, the pans can spin, they can not heat correctly, so you really need to keep them flat. And the best way to mitigate against any of those warping issues is to get the thickest one you can find. Now, uh, Lynn wrote in, she was talking about a Maviel pan. That's a little bit thinner pan. Now, it's lighter weight, it's more maneuverable, but it's more prone to warping on a flat top than a thicker pan would be. This Maviel here, fantastic pan, very high quality. I only use this on my gas stove top. This for pan here, it warps on my induction burner. It returns to shape, thank goodness. But on that induction burner, it warps and it'll spin. Works just fine on gas. Now these Debouillet Mineral B Pros that I talk about so much around here. These are three millimeters thick. They're about the thickest you can get when it comes to carbon steel. Also have an uncoated handle. So I normally recommend a Debouillet Mineral B Pro for people with induction or electric flat top stoves. They're a little bit heavier. They're getting into that range of almost being as heavy as a cast iron skillet. But if you want to mitigate warping issues, get the thickest, heaviest carbon steel you can find on the flat top. Okay, I gotta get all this mess cleaned up before my wife gets home. That about wraps her up for this episode. Leave your questions, comments, and feedback below. Subscribe if you like these pancasts. Check out the shopping links when you get a chance, and we'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast.